Kevin, you said earlier that sanctification is an extraordinary calling being lived out by ordinary mm -hmm. people you know, like us. You know, by the gospel of grace, right. we're living out this miracle. As Pastor John says, we're acting the miracle. And in that, you, you, you talk about the, the means of grace and how ordinary they are. Uh, prayer, Bible reading, local church fellowship, the sacraments. There's really nothing extraordinary about those means of grace f from one sense. Um, explain to us what role those play in uh, this process of sanctification yeah. and growing holiness. And they're even called traditionally the ordinary means of grace. Uh, it's so important because it, it's, it's so easily overlooked because it's so obvious. It just seems like what you would learn in Sunday school. You pray, you read your Bible, go to church. And then the sacraments we sometimes don't think of. But if someone reads the book or if someone's listening to this or someone just in their own life is saying, okay, I, I'm convinced of the importance of holiness, what do I do? What, what are the steps to, to live out this grace? These would be the four things that I would say. And we're apt to uh, roll our, our eyes and think, yeah, I've tried that. But really, if, if we're honest, if we think of a mature godly Christian, someone that we really respect, who has lived an exemplary life, uh, who has been a pillar of his or her church, community, we've just learned from, you can guarantee that person has been faithful in the Word of God, mm -hmm. has spent many hours on their knees or in their chair or on a walk in prayer, and they have been faithfully involved in their local church, and they have, part, they have you know, taken the means of grace from the Lord's table. You, you just, you can count on it. And yet we can easily scoff and think there, there must be something else. There must be some secret. There must be some shortcut. But there isn't because holiness is pursuing a person. And how will you know and have communion with this person except in his word where God manifests himself or in prayer where the Puritans would say you have friendly converse with God or in your local fellowship. I was really struck and, and used this line from John Owen as he was talking about communion with God and local church. That mean this, this body has communion with God's Son. Mm -hmm. And so when you say, I, I don't need that group, and he, his point is no matter how backwards they seem, how strange they seem, this is where you go to meet Christ's body. This is where you go to have fellowship with those who have fellowship with God. And then at the table is just vastly overlooked that there is a real presence, not a transfigured uh, bodily presence, but a real presence of Christ there. He meets us. He comforts us. He nurtures us. And because holiness is the pursuit of Christ, all of these means of grace usher us into the presence of Christ. And thus they're extraordinary means, aren't they? Yeah, are extraordinary. They're ordinary because you can say, oh, okay, I can, I can do that. I mean, anyone who says, I can't be holy. Well, here are these four means of grace. Can you pursue those? Well, I, I guess. And, and the fact of the matter is, we just don't often try them or try them very well or very long, and then we give up. But to continue with these ordinary means will, I think, yield extraordinary results.